Oof, so it took me a while to put this retrospective together, and I'll tell you why, because I did two separate playthroughs of this game. Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which yes, we are going to be taking a look at this classic game. Yes, Sonic 3 and Sonic Knuckles, two separate games that were released separately originally, come together to make one complete game. We gotta do this for visual effect, so, you know, here we go, we got Sonic 3, Sonic Knuckles, you know, I'm a, I'm a kid back in, uh, in, in 94, and here we go, oh, how about that, lock those two babies on, and you've got magic. This is probably one of the most classic games of all time, one of the best retro gaming experiences that you could ever have. Uh, so why did it take me so long to put this together? Well, I recorded the footage using my Elgato on my GameCube, and it didn't look that great. So what I did is I downloaded the Steam version, which is what you'll be seeing here in this retrospective. It's all from Steam, being recorded right off of my PC. And I played through as Sonic and Tails, Knuckles, and just Tails, because I wanted to have you know, a lot of footage. I also wanted to get the different experiences through all the different characters. Um, even though the Tails run is not that much different, but the Knuckles run is. So I, I was pretty busy playing these games. Can you imagine? And it, it takes a while. Not an extremely long game, but it, it definitely takes quite a few hours to play through this with the multiple characters featured within. So guys, I hope you all enjoy this retrospective because I worked very hard on it to get it for you. So guys, without further ado, here you go. Sonic 3 picks up right where Sonic 2 left off and their adventure begins with Sonic and Tails as they're headed to Angel Island in the tornado after seeing Dr. Robotnik's death egg crash onto the island. Sonic jumps off the the plane and transforms into supersonic in an awesome cutscene that sets the tone for an awesome game. Sonic glides across the water and the guardian of Angel Island, Knuckles, pops out of the ground and ambushes an unsuspecting Sonic and swipes all of his chaos emeralds and runs off. Now, how long was Knuckles waiting down there? I mean, he's hiding in the damn bushes like some kind of creeper on the box art of Sonic 3. So I'll assume quite a while. Anyway, Knuckles has been tricked by Dr. Robotnik and has convinced Knuckles that Sonic was coming to the island to steal the Master Emerald, which he guards, and it keeps Angel Island afloat, by the way. This is Knuckles' first appearance, and it's a great classic cutscene to introduce him. Something about that chuckle he does right before he runs off is just so satisfying, making his character instantly likable. I also like how unlike Sonic 1, uh, continuing into Sonic 2, Sonic 3 actually acknowledges that Sonic actually has collected the emeralds prior and now it's been explained why he doesn't have them. I love that continuity making it feel like it's an actual continuing saga and it's good to know that Sonic just doesn't have holes in his non-existent pants pockets, right? Now if you're playing as Knuckles or Tails, there's no cutscene. The game just starts. Now, this is the first zone of the game, Angel Island Zone, and it's quite a departure from the first zones in the first two games, as it's a tropical paradise, unlike the similar looking Green Hill and Emerald Hill Zone. I mean, hell, those zones even had hill in their names. They knew these two were pretty similar. Angel Island is a fantastic first level. It's just such a joy to look at and to swing from vines and ride on the zip lines. Even the loops have a tropical look. They did an awesome job making this game look different right off the bat. You run into this flaming tank as you reach uh, a part of the level, and it sets the entire level on fire, and the entire screen gets filled with flames. An incredible effect. Just looks so cool. You can't even uh, beat the tank here, trust me. I've tried. 
Um, it will set the level on fire no matter what. Uh, you progress a little further and finally fight the tank in what is the very first mini boss fight of the Sonic series. If you're playing with Sonic or Tails, it's a joke. You can just bounce on it continuously until it blows up. With Knuckles, however, you actually have to put some effort in because Knuckles can't actually jump high enough to do that trick. Knuckles even takes a different path in this zone and this will be a continuous theme throughout the game which makes for a cool parallel to Sonic and Tails view of the zones and makes the Knuckles playthrough totally worth it. Knuckles playthrough is way tougher though so be ready. So in Act 2 you come to a part where if you're playing as Sonic a gigantic bomber plane flies overhead and starts dropping bombs on you as you outrun it. It's super easy as you just have to press left the whole time, but it's a great lead up to the upcoming boss fight. You come to a waterfall and Robotnik reveals himself, emerging from behind the waterfall, which to me is one hell of an introduction. And so begins the first tussle with Robotnik of the game. If you're Knuckles, you will be introduced to your own exclusive nemesis, the Egg Robo. Which is not nearly as cool as Robotnik, but it's cool that Knuckles gets to have his own separate bad guy. And since he's being tricked, it makes sense that Robotnik's secretly using this robot to try and kill Knuckles. As Robotnik tends to Sonic. Uh, and... As you learn during this boss fight, Knuckles' boss battles are way harder with different attack patterns. After defeating Robotnik, Knuckles chuckles once more and then jumps on a switch and the bridge underneath you explodes and you plummet into the next zone. I love how Knuckles just mocks you and keeps impeding your progress in these entertaining little cutscenes. It just gives the game in Knuckles um, such fantastic personality and character. Now, if you're playing as Knuckles, you jump off a bridge. Damn, is life really that hard as a guardian? Now, if Knuckles jumped off, jumped off a bridge, would you do it? Well, he does survive, so... Now, before we go any further with the zones, I want to talk a little bit about the bonus stages and how you could obtain the Chaos Emeralds. Like Sonic 1, Sonic 3 brings back the Giant Rings, which can be used to access the bonus levels where you can obtain the Chaos Emeralds. But unlike Sonic 1, these rings are hidden throughout the various zones, and you don't need to meet the 50 ring requirement to gain entry, which is so much less stressful the checkpoint post from Sonic 2 can still be used to access bonus stages, but you can only obtain shield power-ups, rings, one-ups, and continues within them. So obtaining the emeralds is way easier than the impossible Sonic 2 special stages, but not quite as easy as Sonic 1. This time you must collect all the blue spheres in these pseudo 3D checkerboarded landscapes and avoid the red spheres which is easier said than done. These are pretty fun and require some strategy. Now, once you collect all the Chaos Emeralds, you could then collect the Super Emeralds, 14 Emeralds in all, which can be a pretty daunting task, but it's not that bad. Once you get all the Chaos Emeralds, you could transform into Super Sonic or Super Knuckles, but get the Super Emeralds too, and you could transform into Hyper Sonic and Hyper Knuckles which are souped up Super Saiyan level 2 style transformations. The funny thing is, Tails only gets one transformation, and you have to collect all the emeralds to get that one single transformation. Tangle Tails gets nothing for collecting just the Chaos Emeralds. Why did Sonic Team troll Tails so hard? Why, why doesn't he get a hyper form? At least he gets this cool, flicky death squad that lets Tails just sit back as these birds of prey go full Alfred Hitchcock on the bosses and other enemies. Okay, now, the question I have here is, since Knuckles stole the emeralds, did he really set up all these spheres? This seems pretty elaborate. Maybe invest in a safe next time? 
Hydro City Zone. Oh, the beloved water level. What Sonic game wouldn't be complete without one? On the side note, you'll fall into the zone at the start, continuing your fall off the bridge from Angel Island Zone, completing the first level transition of the game. You got a few of those towards the end of Sonic 2, but not throughout the majority of the game. Here you get one for every zone you complete. I love how they bridge the zones and it tells the story of how you got there and you're not just magically appearing in the next level like you do in many video games of this time. It shows effort and continuity, which I really appreciate. Anyway, Hydro City Zone is definitely better than Labyrinth Zone from Sonic 1 as you are granted way more opportunities for speed with these awesome twisting slides and you can even run on the water which is such a cool effect. Sonic's pulling a total messiah here. But speaking of Labyrinth Zone, you get these instances where Sonic is holding on to poles as water currents push him around which is a nice throwback. But you spend way more time above water than actually in it, unlike Labyrinth, when you were mostly submerged throughout. Not sure if I like this one better than Chemical Plant. I think I like Chemical Plant a bit better. Both zones have great music and cool designs. Um, this place is kind of like a temple manufacturing facility or something. Nothing's being manufactured here, but there's conveyor belts and spinning fans. It's not that clear what this place is exactly. And Wowzers, Tails can actually swim? Can he give Sonic some lessons? Tails is indeed the easy mode of this game, and I love flying through this zone as him and exploring the higher up nooks and crannies, which are extremely tricky to reach as Sonic. You can do it with Knuckles Cl Glide too, but... Tails has a way easier time, and and you also don't have to put up with Knuckles' baby jump. My favorite moment from this zone has to be at the beginning of the second act when this wall just starts coming after you. This is a total Indiana Jones type scenario, and I love how you have to outrun it. The mini boss is easy, but his Knuckles uh, and that damn baby jump... This fight is made three times harder. Also, during the main boss fight in Act 2, Egg Robo doesn't move his craft down to the water like Robotnik, making it way tougher to hit him. Is this robot actually smarter than Robotnik? It looks like it. He doesn't leave himself open to damage as easily as Robotnik does. After all this, a giant geyser just blows you into the next zone. Marble Garden Zone. I can't help but hear you lady who throughout this level as it takes place in a mountain garden. This level has so many alternative paths. It's highly unlikely you'll take the same path twice in consecutive playthroughs. I always feel like I get hit every two seconds in this zone with these spike balls and these annoying enemies that seemingly pop out of nowhere. There's even one of these spiky surprises right in the beginning of the first act. Bubbles, this floating spiky bandic, always seems to be in a spot where you are likely to be running at full speed. And this other one, Spiker, that disguises itself as an ordinary assortment of spikes and then shoots pellets at you, always catching you off guard. The enemy placement seems a bit unusual for this zone, and while it challenges you to keep your eyes peeled, this isn't particularly consistent with the later zones. Sometimes it feels a little unfair and gets annoying constantly losing rings at every turn. I like how Robotnik attaches a huge drill to his hovercraft and uses it to cause a massive seismic shift in the zone that Sonic has to quickly run through and not get squashed by the terrain. Moments like these make the zones feel alive and not just painted on backdrops you wallow through in a lot of games. The main boss of this zone is an interesting because you will have to approach it differently depending on who you're playing as. If you're playing as Sonic, Robotnik comes and just destroys the entire zone. Well, damn, that's extreme. Tails will grab Sonic just in time and from here, you can launch Sonic onto Robotnik when an opening presents itself. 
if you're playing as Tails, this battle gets weird. Sonic is nowhere to be found, and you must use this weird tactic where you have to tap Robotnik from underneath his hovercraft with your Tails, and this somehow causes damage. It's extremely awkward, and you have to be spot on with the taps, or you'll take damage. Tails' run is by far the easiest, but this is one particular moment where things get trickier. It's weird because if you chose to just use Sonic with no Tails at the start of the game, Tails will still come to aid you. Well, damn, Sonic, that just shows how much you care about your little buddy over there. Knuckles gets an entirely different boss, and it can be a bit tricky before you learn the patterns. But I really like how Knuckles gets an exclusive boss, and this change probably would have been a good idea for Tails here. They should have made that fix for the lock-on. After the boss, you fly off to the next destination, and you get a really cool day-to-night transition. Carnival Night Zone the nighttime setting and bumpers definitely make this the Sonic 3 version of Spring Yard and Casino Night Zone, but it feels different enough to feel fresh and new, but this time you don't feel like you're in a pinball machine because there's a ton of new stage gimmicks present here. Act 2 is notorious for this barrel gimmick, which plagued me as a kid when I rented Sonic 3, and was the bane of many's existence when they came upon this initially complex stage gimmick. Turns out, you just need to press up and down to pass the obstacle, but it definitely throws you for a loop because in what other part of the game did you have to press up to this point? Unless you played as Knuckles first. Speaking of Knuckles, Act 2 is extremely short for him. There's no barrel, and there isn't even a main boss. I always found this odd because the boss for Sonic and Tails here wouldn't be impossible for Knuckles to beat. However, as Sonic, Act 2 is extremely long, and it's rare I make it through this stage quickly. I like the dynamic of Knuckles causing a power outage by pressing a switch, once again giving the stage a very lively feeling and a nice juxtaposition to the bright and cheery setting of Act 1. Also, it's clear to see that the music track on Act 1 was one of Michael Jackson's favorite tracks when working on this game's soundtrack, as he reuses part of it in his song Jam off his Dangerous album. Here's a sample of the part he reuses. Ice Cap Zone, and what's probably one of the most iconic Sonic moments, Sonic starts off the zone riding a snowboard down a snowy mountain. You can't control it, but it's cool as hell. Sonic totally upstaged Sean White before he was even a thing. Sonic's extreme, he's getting some of that fresh powder, dudes. Act 1 sees yet another callback to the beloved Labyrinth Zone of Sonic 1, with the repeating stage gimmick as he falls down the shaft full of slopes until you jump on the necessary platform in order to proceed. What's the deal with this glowing fox face on here by the way? This is not the only time we see this thing during the zone. What exactly is this thing supposed to represent? Weird. Act 1 is the underground portion and Act 2 is mostly above ground unless you don't manage to stay on top of this level and you will be punished by having to go back down below where things are a bit trickier. This is for Sonic anyway. Knuckles' version of uh, Act 2 is way tougher than Sonic's as there's far trickier platforming and it's way easier to get frozen by the Act 2 boss due to the smaller window of opportunity to score a clean hit. Further proving Sonic's mode is for sick masochists. Also, it's interesting to note that we would later learn that one of the music composers, Brad Buxer, ended up using one of his unreleased music tracks from his band The Jetsons as the music for this zone. And it's based on a song called Hard Times, which is actually available for you to listen to on Spotify right now. So, uh, and no, the band doesn't have anything to do with George or Elroy to the wise guys out there. 
The song has vocals and the keyboards are performed by Buxer himself. And it's basically the same exact melody as Ice Cap's music. In addition, Buxer was actually recruited to be a composer at the request of Michael Jackson. Ice Cap Act 1 just so happens to be one of my favorite music tracks in the game, and I highly recommend you listen to the Hard Times track, as it's a great 80s new wave style song. Hard to believe the band didn't like it enough to release it for so long. Launch Base Zone. As you make it to the base, it's cool to see a little bit of the snow from Ice Cap on the ground. I can't stress enough that these transitions seem so minor, but help so much with the flow of the game in my opinion. The Death Egg is ready to launch into space once more, and this base is full of all different gimmicks to help Sonic either get around or try to kill him. If you're playing as Knuckles, the Act 1 boss can be a major pain in the neck as these two robots with spinning maces give you very little room to work with. The Sonic version of this fight is so much easier, it's almost pathetic in comparison. Playing Act 2 with Sonic while playing Locked On with Sonic and Knuckles removes the big arm boss and I'm not sure if it's because they felt this boss was too tough since this is not the last level anymore, it was a Sonic 3, and perhaps to keep a more consistent difficulty, they made this decision. Knuckles gets to fight the big arm boss uh, with the Egg Robo, but that's understandable considering you already recognize at this point you're playing what's basically the hard mode of the game. One of the most hilarious parts of this game occurs when you play as Sonic after fighting the first phase of Robotnik. You get to briefly ride in Robotnik's hovercraft, but as you enter it, oh, it's only a one-seater as Tails plummets to his untimely death. What the hell? This was just crazy to me as a kid. Like, Sonic is just like, screw you Tails, this is my sweet ride. Take a hike, you two-tail loser. That's cold, Sonic. It also is funny seeing Knuckles try to mess with you here, and then getting some payback as the vibrations from the thrusters knock him off his perch. His falling animation as he's trying to balance himself is equally as, as hilarious. He's like, whoa, whoa. Mushroom Hill Zone, basically a grassy, hilly forest full of mushrooms to bounce on. Wise guys are sure to make tons of shroom jokes, but take your stoner jokes out of here. Getting high on Mushroom Kingdom residents, you sickos. We all know mushrooms are made for growing into a strong, healthy boy. There's definitely some similarities to Green Hill because of the greenery, but it's quite different overall. At the start of the level, you'll see Knuckles sneaking out of a gated area, which turns out to be a section of the Hidden Palace Zone, a place that was originally scheduled to appear in Sonic 2. Here you can give up your Chaos Emeralds and get a chance to acquire the Super Emeralds. The only downside is that if you had all 7 Chaos Emeralds, you can't turn in the Super Sonic anymore. But if you acquire all seven Super Emeralds, you'll get to transform into Hypersonic. I like the Lumberjack mini boss. I think this is a clever choice, but you can just bounce him into submission just like the tank boss in Angel Island Zone. Robotnik will run you through an obstacle course, which is pretty creative, but very easy, even with Knuckles. Uh, the Egg Robo just kind of has one extra little obstacle to throw in your path. A large airship flies overhead, and Sonic jumps aboard, making for an, another awesome transition. Flying Battery Zone. Always going to be one of my favorite zones of the entire game. Just love the aesthetic and all the different gimmicks and the amazing music. Does anyone notice the music in Act 2 and the mini-boss music for that matter sound like the James Bond theme in some parts? Have a listen right here.
there's definitely Sky Fortress vibes from Sonic 2 going on here. When you're down below, platforming above total oblivion, in fact, Robotnik uses a modified version of one of his contraptions from Sky Fortress. You'll spend most of your time inside the ship, and there's tons of variety here to keep things interesting, like these mesh funnels, uh, make me think Sonic's getting flung around like he's part of a raffle drawing, or someone's about to yell bingo. The mini-boss hurts himself in hilarious fashion as you move out of the way at the last second to avoid his hits and he damages himself. Sonic Team messes up as Robotnik actually appears as the Act 2 boss instead of the Egg Robo um, during the Knuckles playthrough, which is just a weird oversight. Sonic then jumps off the freaking airship. Is Sonic capable of surviving nearly any fall, no matter what the height? I mean, now he just jumped off a freaking plane, dude. This mofo is hardcore. Sandopolis Zone. Like Marble Garden, there's a ton of paths in Act 1, and let me tell you, there's few guarantees in life. But there are some. Death, taxes, and getting hit by these freaking scorpion mofos. Oh god, these things are nearly impossible to get around without losing rings. They just seem to always hit me. They just have so much range with their tail. The Act 1 boss seems to be invincible at first. How do you beat this stone face behemoth? Well, you must wait for him to follow you into the quicksand. Creative? But we just had a mini boss in the previous zone that involves having him hurt himself to win. I know Flying Battery was originally set to be the zone before Ice Cap, and it was swapped out at the last minute during development, but this just feels all too familiar all too fast, using a way too similar gimmick back to back. In Act 2, my childhood fears come back to haunt me. Who as a kid was not scared of these damn ghosts? This is a freaking terrifying gimmick in which you have to keep the lights turned on because once things get too dark, the ghosts go in for the kill. And once you start off as Knuckles, these things are already released and already in kill mode. This is just a nerve-wracking experience and adds a whole new dynamic to the Sonic universe. Fear. There's a real sense of consistent urgency throughout, and I like how this really sets itself apart from Act 1 and from the rest of the zones in the game. Lava Reef. This zone takes place inside a volcano and also has a really cool Act 2. These pole-like badniks shoot these clouds that cling to you and slowly suck away your rings. These enemies are extremely annoying because you have to move left and right rapidly to get this damn cloud off of you. Now, hold on. Is this pole farting? Is the, the cloud so toxically smelly you have no choice but to remove it before it suffocates you into a nostril-filling stench-ridden death? Okay, moving on, in Act 1, I find the mini-boss to be really strange. Just a giant hand and two tentacles with uh, circular tips. There's no body. I love that lava waterfall in the background. Lava waterfall? Isn't that kind of an oxymoron? Act 2 has this really calming design. I don't know what it is, but I love the blue icy aesthetic. And the equally calming music track is one of my favorite tracks in the game. I don't know how it got all icy in here, but it makes for a great differential from Act 1. You survive yet another massive fall. When Knuckles tries to crush you with an ice boulder, Sonic is just falling all over the place in this game. He's like the sky diving champion or something. All of a sudden, you see the face of the Death Egg sticking out of the ceiling of the cave and the eyes flash destroying the ground beneath you. Really cool screen filling effect here. The boss that fouls just goes on and on. Why does it take so many hits to beat this thing? It's not even the final boss but you have to do a total marathon fight 
hitting him almost double the amount of times you've had to hit him in previous fights. If you're Knuckles, you will skip this boss, which again is pretty disappointing, but you get to save yourself the agony of a never-ending battle. Hidden Palace Zone. We finally get to see what was planned for Sonic 2. Well, some version of it anyway, because we see based on prototypes of Sonic 2, it was actually quite different in design originally. But it's super short and only one act with no bad nicks. You get to duke it out with Knuckles, however, no weapons or anything, just Knuckles himself. I like the Egyptian style mural on the wall of Super Sonic battling the Death Egg robot in space. That's just a cool little touch, like it's a long awaited prophecy or something. Suddenly, Robotnik strikes and steals the Master Emerald, and Knuckles finally realizes he's been tricked once he gets shocked by Robotnik, and he decides to team up with you and helps you access the next zone. Sky Sanctuary Zone, another single act zone as you watch as the Death Egg finally begins its ascent into space. It's a decent length and nowhere as short as Hidden Palace Zone. Here you'll be introduced to Mecha Sonic, the next in line of Sonic's metallic doppelgangers. I like this one better than Silver Sonic, however, but not quite as much as the much more popular Metal Sonic. He uses two of Robotnik's previous machines from Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, which is a pretty cool throwback. Then you get to face him without the aid of the hovercraft, and it's pretty much identical to the Silver Sonic fight from Sonic 2. If you go here as Knuckles, this is the final stage, and it's just a fight against Metal Sonic, who turns out to be the final boss as he accidentally destroys the Egg Robo. After all that, the Egg Robo gets upstaged by someone else? Well, Egg Robo was not exactly a compelling character, so I'll take it. I don't think I would really like him being the final boss. After damaging Mecha enough, he'll use the Master Emerald to go super, which is another Knuckles exclusive. I love the animation of Mecha jumping on top of the Master Emerald and sucking up his juices. That's just so well animated and cool. After all this, as Sonic, you'll jump aboard the Death Egg, thus beginning the next zone. After hopping aboard the Death Egg, you'll be greeted to a pretty sizable zone, which is definitely bigger than its version in Sonic 2, which was not even a true zone. Once again, you'll get a host of new stage gimmicks. In Act 1, you come to this room, which is just odd. It keeps pulling you to the right, but you keep bouncing off the wall that looks like the exit, but it's blocked off. It took me quite a while to figure out how you're supposed to get out of here. I once thought you had to hit every bumper in the room to progress, but turns out you only need to hit the bumpers that are moving up and down. If you don't, you'll keep endlessly bouncing back and forth. This is a pretty annoying room to say the least, having to hear that metallic bing, bing, bing every two seconds as you bounce off of everything until you're able to escape this veritable torture chamber. In Act 2, you'll be treated to a gravity-defying upside down gimmick which was pretty rare to see at the time. These upside down conveyor belts that move from side to side have always been a nightmare for me and I'm always sure to lose some lives during each playthrough by either getting blasted by one of these missiles or getting struck by the spikes on the wall. You'll fight Robotnik using the gravity gimmick and then he'll run off and jump into his new Death Egg robot. I like this fight. It's a lot better than the Sonic 2 one. The only tricky thing here is timing your jumps to avoid his huge beam attack. If you're playing his tails, you can just fly over it, making a total joke out of him. After the robot is destroyed, you still have to chase after Robotnik, who is trying to escape with the Master Emerald as the platform you're standing on starts collapsing. This part is even more nerve-wracking because, trust me, it is possible to hit Robotnik and bounce back into oblivion if you're not positioned just right. Trust me, it's happened to me. You have to really be careful here because there's nothing more frustrating than having to go back to the beginning of the whole entire fight just because you messed up here. 
Doomsday Zone. If you collected all the Chaos Emeralds or Super Emeralds, you will continue the fight against Robotnik as he snatches the Master Emerald once again. You turn into Supersonic or Hypersonic and fly after him in a massive asteroid field. I gotta say, flying through space in your Hyperform is pretty rad. And this is the perfect setting for a final battle. You first have to guide Robotnik's own missiles into his spaceship and then he'll try to escape in a smaller version of the Death Egg Robot. Dear Lord, Robotnik is persistent. You have to fly into him which is easier said than done as he'll fire a number of projectiles at you and you'll experience knockback if you get hit. And you have to keep an eye on your ring count as well which keeps ticking down. Hit him enough times and that's it. You've beat the game. The Master Emerald is returned to its rightful spot and that's it. Definitely a rewarding experience. Sonic 3 and Knuckles is the very best Sonic game of all time in my opinion. There's so much variety, personality, and such an attention to detail it's hard for me to consider it anything but. If you've never experienced this game before, I would highly recommend it. This is one where I will say you should have your gamer card and civil rights revoked for not playing. It should be mandated by law that you have to play this game. I will not accept anything less from American citizens. It is your sworn duty to play this game. I mean, what are you, a commie? I mean, this game bleeds red, white, and blue. Sonic's blue, Knuckles is red, and uh, Tails has some white. Okay, 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 maybe I'm getting a little carried away, but anyway, I want to thank all of you for watching this, and please subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell so you get all the notifications when I post all my new videos. I also want to thank all my patrons for your continued support as well, and I'll see you next time.